Hello everybody, my name is William Murray and I once ran for Congress in the state of Pennsylvania. I want to help you learn how to start your own campaign for office and one of the first questions you get is how do you get off the ground? How do you actually start and make it a formal process of I am a candidate for office, you need to recognize me as a candidate and you should give. The very first step is you have to tell yourself that you are applying for a job just like any other job that wants a resident you are applying for a job with a special application process. The first step is telling you, my name is such and such, I am running for this specific office in this year, and I need to raise. That is the first step. Once you tell yourself that, that is a great pat yourself on the uh, mental step to accepting that you are now a candidate for office. To get legal recognition and public recognition from others, you need to start raising money. The Federal Elections Commission formally considers you a candidate for office the second you start taking money from people and using it towards a candidate. So the next step is once you have friends and family over, you need to have a little coming out party. And at this party, you need to tell them, hey guys, my name is such and such, and I'm going to run for this office in this election year, and I need you to donate to my campaign so we can get our campaign off. Once you start soliciting people for money, that officially makes you a policy. The most important thing to do with campaign money is to keep it separate from your... Do not put that money in your own wallet or in your own bank account. You need to keep it separate. You can start out small putting it in a separate jar and have cash and coins. That is totally... Eventually, you'll need to move this money from your jar or your shoe box into a formal bank account. Banks have their own procedures for opening up a campaign account just uh, political can. These, can these uh, bank accounts are often uh, tax... So it doesn't count as a charitable donation, but because it's part of the political process, it doesn't count as... So that is one important... Depending on your bank, the bank might want you to go to the Federal Elections Commission or your local elections board first and have them sign a form that says, this individual is actually a candidate we recognize because they came to our office and said they want... And we want you to sponsor their bank. The elections board or the elections commission is going to need an address for where your money for your campaign is being stored and that money is typically stored. In. Now the elections commission might have you sign some forms and create a campaign committee. They can help walk you through that initial process. Uh, everyone I've talked to both at the bank and through the FEC was really nice and helped start your own campaign. <clears throat> to my surprise some of the free services the bank was helping me out with like say getting a employee identification number with the IRS. They told me that business owners have paid lawyers to come in and do this for them for some absurd amount, like $200 an hour, when the bank just helped me do it for free because it's a very standard part of their product. You get a lot of help when you tell a bank that I want to put money into your bank. So just keep that. So the next important step besides putting the money separate from your own finances and in a separate bank account is to make sure you're tracking who your donors are. And I don't just mean tracking in the sense of, okay, who can I get the most money from? but there are legal requirements to have specific information from donors uh, when you report finances for your campaign. Typically, and this might vary based on local or state levels for the Federal Elections Commission, it was nation. The information they want is typically what their full name is, what their full address is, how old are they, how much have they donated previously, because sometimes there's individual contribution, and who their employer is and what their occupation is. This information is part of uh, campaign transparency, and this is a step we do to make sure that we don't have any dark money, uh, shadows, conspiracy donors uh, influencing elections without people publicly. If you follow federal politics, you know that there's big money involved in campaigns, but at least you can look up who's who and who's uh, on the FEC. So now that you've tracked donors and you have actual money to start your campaign with, to get started, I would recommend getting a website. The quality of the website does reflect on how much investment you're putting into your own campaign. I would strongly recommend buying your own website instead of trying to program it for or use a free. I personally use Squarespace and I know they're a popular sponsor on YouTube. They're not sponsoring me. I just had a great uh, time using them to start my own. I would also recommend you have a good photographer or a good photo shoot to put nice photos of yourself on the website. Once I bought the website, I realized I did not have uh, very many good photos of myself. So I had to go do a photo shoot with my family and this nice camera that we're looking for. And after you get a web, that web, 
serves as a nucleus of where where should people contact you you know co come to my website I have a contact page I have an information page this is the best way to reach me I would also recommend you keep your uh, personal email and your personal off the web it's better to have contact page or contact form where somebody can message you to a separate email account or you have a campaign phone number to keep uh, some space between your personal life and your campaign life. And once you have that set up, you just need to start talking to people. Start recruiting volunteers. Start talking to people about what you want. Um, I know you might have this imposter syndrome of why would anybody want to listen, but once you start telling them I am a candidate for office, you can look me up. I've got a website. They're going to I can't believe somebody as young as you or somebody with your background, your education, you know, I can't believe for whatever reason that you're actually, um, in my case, people liked that I was young and people liked that I had a science background and I wasn't sponsored by any establishment politics. I wasn't coming from political circles. People liked that I was just a new face trying to make a stand. Um, and you can think about how that applies to your own situation, whether you are an underrepresented minority, underfunded. If you have a unique background, trauma or success that people can relate to, people will donate or support a candidate they identify with and whether they like you. It's You could have horrible policies, and I don't agree with this because I'm a policy person, but you could have horrible policies, but if you are agreeable and you can make people enjoy being around you, you can get a lot of support from them. It's really impressive. But yeah, just start recruiting volunteers, start talking to people and getting the word out. There's plenty of other suggestions and guides on how to run a full campaign and host campaign events, but I'm just trying to tell you how you get started. So in summary, open up a separate bank account, start tracking your donors and what their information is for campaign finance laws, buy a website and build your website, get a photographer involved or a nice photo shoot to make your website look extra nice with clean photos of yourself, and then just start talking to people. That is all for today. Thank you for watching and consider running for office.